Right, good morning comrades and welcome to probably something to do with Audis. Well, we are in one and there are lots of them. And today, as the title of this video suggests, there are lots of changes I'm going to talk to you through. Starting with, I'm changing the TTS. Don't mind my, uh, my like re real douchebag parking uh, because I'm actually swapping cars. The TTS for the Q8. So that's the first change. So I'm going to hop in this, drive it out, put the TTS there. So again, don't uh, bash me on my parking skills. First time I'm going to be driving such a car. Um, I'm very curious. I'm very curious, very excited. So let, let me quickly swap things and then proceed to our next change. Still equipped with winter tires. Press profile. Oh, the diesel torque. Yeah, heads up display, that's nice. Hmm. Big and massive, quite a change from a TT. Almost did 4,000 kilometers with the TTS. I guess it's quite an achievement. I may be pretty proud of myself. Bye. I kind of miss you. Too bad we didn't have a chance to meet each other or get to know each other better on the track. Huh, maybe next time. Well, while I'm here, I made a quick stop at the Audi forum. And look what we have here. The e-tron that climbed the mousetrap with the controversial cable, the safety rope. Not It was not really pulling the car. But those bikes, yeah, they made it possible. And of course, the amazing driving skills of Matthias Ekstrom. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Cannot wait to get my hands on this. I mean, I don't have a crane. Obviously, I drove it last year on a Scari. Fast forward to a random city. I just made a pit stop. Uh, but <laughs> look at the Miata for scale. It really shows how massive the Q8 is. First impressions are pretty good, uh, but more on that later in today's video. Okay, got some wheels. Got the McLaren, some rain tires. Cool. Cheers. Um, right, fast forward. Uh, I wanted to show you the um, the color at the daylight, daylight at the Eiffel daylight because it's raining, bad weather. But a short update: the wheels for the the McLaren have arrived because we uh, bought the second set of wheels for the 600 LT. So it's going to be rain wheels, and a car has arrived. Well, it's the 675 LT because it was out for service, right? And now I'm going to go to get another update. Looks very good. Looks very very good. Awesome. So uh, it's a nice color. More on the on the car, maybe like in a separate video or maybe during today, I don't know. I gotta run, running late for appointment. It's been a while since I drove or refueled the diesel. Yep, these, oh, add blue as well, okay. Ah, I heard that for some reason WTCR cars are on track today, but I will not have time to uh, to film it. Uh, not this, not this, there we go. Well, all I want to say is that the fuel consumption is very, very good in this car. I drove from Ingolstadt back here, which is like roughly 500 kilometer trip in one tank, and I still have a lot of range left. It was saying like 850 kilometers on the full tank, probably it's a bit more. In my case, it's probably a bit less because, well, unlimited autobahn, you drive a bit faster. Uh, usually cruise control on 180. First thing I want to say about this, the adaptive cruise control is a bit of a smart ass when it comes to German autobahns because when you have unlimited section the car knows when there's going to be speed limit again soon so it kind of goes in that speed limit way before the section and it starts breaking down and the cars behind you are like why are you braking that so it creates a bit of an unpleasant situation sometimes uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can switch it off let's see how big the tank is uh, yeah, probably like 80 liter tank or 70 Oh, that's interesting. Vehicle is refueled. Reset kilometers now. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's reset it. See how much I can do on a full tank, more or less. With my driving style, around 800. I'm pretty sure you can do a thousand with a full tank if you like average out uh, speed limit country, so to say. Uh, what I really like is this actually. Um, the the input you can just do type. You have pretty big input screen. So let's do. I think that's the postcode that Five, I need. Three, yeah. L E S S E N. There we go. All right. Let's see if we can maybe spot something here at Brunchen of the WTCR cars. Oh, I never drove so fast through Brunchen, I guess. 
the Q8 has its advantages. <laughs> and I'm sitting very high. I've never been this high up. Well, I can just basically wait here. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed today's Nurburgring content because that's all you're gonna get. Now on to my barber's appointment. Also check this out. That's like almost a classic. Dodge Stealth. Wow, RT even. Hmm. Fashion police. Hey Sergio. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> I work for Hergy. Yeah? <laughs> this, is, this is Autobahn. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> one way street. Hey, here's a one way. Yeah. All right. New car, new cut. Now to the new camera. Massive shout out to Barber Time as always in Bonn. Thank you. Well, massive thumbs up. That's a big thumbs up. That's really like Germany at its best. I mean, it's not a it's not a lawnmower. It's not cutting grasses. It's cleaning the poles. All right then, keeping the country clean. Look at that! Wow. That doesn't look stuck to me. Okay, by the way, nice feature on the Q8 is that you have also keyless go on the back doors. Looking good. Interesting. The owner of Pata Negra, where I just had my sandwich, who is actually gonna close, makes me sad, told me that this front part of the building How's it called? Facade? Yeah. Uh, there was a massive discussion because it's like apparently from 16th century, but eventually, even with all the protests, they decided to break it down as well. Sad. Yeah, for people who don't know, uh, this is my old hometown of Helmond. And yeah, it was kind of interesting to see that building getting demolished. But now, uh, continuing with the Q7 review, uh, the space. The space is obviously massive. There is more than enough space. Let me move this slightly somewhere. And this will go here. Yeah, perfect. I'm just going to go back here. I, even, I haven't even checked the trunk. Or have I? Or have I not? Can I open it? Yeah, of course I checked it because my suitcase was here yesterday. No, massively spacious, uh, nothing to complain about. Hmm. And now let's pick up my new camera. It took a while, but as promised, here's my new camera. Yeah, for people who don't know, I film all my vlogs on my phone ever since, what are you, for four years by now? Started with, uh, with the Note. Note 4, I think, Samsung, then moved to Galaxy X7, S8, this is S9+, Plus, and now getting the S10+. Plus. So this will be my new camera. Honestly, a lot of people have asked, why am I not filming on like a camera, camera traditional, something like a GH something, or even a Sony G7, or you name it. Well, the thing is, uh, we have uh, had a couple of high production value videos, but you always say like, this is not you, this is not your style, we enjoy your videos when you film through your phone, it's kind of like as if we're with you. So I stick to that principle. And then reason number two is because it's convenient. I always have it in my pocket when there is something I can just quickly click record and record whatever is happening, especially at the Nürburgring, things move pretty fast. If you snooze, you lose, that's basically uh, what I want to say. I am thinking, however, of buying like an actual camera camera for some type of videos that are not as a vlog vlog, but like uh, more like car reviews where the, the image quality uh, kind of does matter. Uh, but so far, 
oh, everything has been fine. No one is complaining about image quality. Mostly it's about sound. And when I do have higher production value, I do uh, I just add external microphone to it. But anyhow, so as of tomorrow, the, um, the video will be shot on the S10 Plus. So you can compare. I wanted to do it today, but I got here pretty late at my hometown with my mom. So that's why you have to wait for tomorrow until I transfer all the data, etc. One thing I want to say is that uh, since yeah, my S9 Plus, I will not be using it anymore. It's uh, for sale. Also, this comes, yeah, let's not show the serial number, who knows. This comes with a Galaxy Watch. I don't think I'll be using it, so I think that's for sale as well. Uh, because I have an amazing Apex Watch, by the way, from BRM, yep, yep. So if someone's looking for a new phone, uh, shoot me a message on uh, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, or well, whatever, shoot me an email. What should I say? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, quick first initial thoughts of the Q8. Honestly, I was totally not excited in terms of, uh, as a petrol head, of driving it. Uh, because I'm like, yeah, okay, SUV, not my cup of tea. But uh, after having driven by now o o over a thousand kilometers, I was close to a thousand kilometers. Um, I do really enjoy like it. It's very comfortable. It's uh, it has some interesting good features like aut autonomous level one driving, so it's keeping its lane. It's turning by itself. Um, yeah, the, the uh, active cruise control. It's uh, it's very good. There are a couple of things that I like less about it, but uh, you have to wait for the full review but uh, so far i'm positively impressed it, it's a very good daily car but uh, if i would get it i would spec it somewhat differently and again there are a couple of things that i want to talk to you about in a separate video tomorrow going to rimac yes that rimac um not sure if it's gonna involve cars it's something else so stay tuned for that um yeah you'll see everything tomorrow shot on my new phone excited Woo. Uh, see you then Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. The best feature, if people are watching from Helmond, this must be like the worst speed bump ever created by mankind. And the Q8 has absolutely no problems with it. That's lit.